The story begins as Victor positions a blade beneath Aileen's chin and icily interrogates her motives. Aileen smiles sarcastically, thinking of how kind her sweetheart is. She remarks that he has finally decided to look at her with those fiery eyes, the way he usually looks at that woman. Aileen casts a glance at the cowering blonde-haired woman, a woman who never gets her hands dirty and knows how to shed tears pitifully, the kind and frail Charlotte. Victor plunges a sword inside her, explaining how by committing the crimes of practicing evil magic and attempting to harm Charlotte, she single-handedly led House Mertensia to its ruin. Aileen scoffs and curses him bitterly, a curse that makes it so that he has no choice but to love her. She then collapses. Charlotte trembles, telling Victor how bad she feels about Aileen since she has to die a painful death but Victor held no pity for her. Aileen ponders just what is so different between her and Charlotte. Why does she get to be comforted in everyone's arms while she is forced to meet such a painful death? Yun Minji abruptly jolted awake. She drowsily wonders what a random dream she had. As she gets ready for the day, he wonders why that gorgeous woman is dying in her dream. She silently prays that she died without any regrets. But it was true what they say. Be careful what you wish for. As Yoon Minji woke up in a completely unfamiliar environment and body, it was only then that she realized who the woman in her dream was and why she was dying. The people here call her Aileen Mertensia, the notorious villainess. However, they are wrong. To be more precise, she is Yoon Minji, currently possessing the body of the villainess who appears in the novel Lady Lily and the so-called author of this novel was her, whom she wrote about ten years ago. But to make things worse for Minji, of all the characters in the novel, she became the villainous Aileen. And unlike the beautiful and well-liked female lead Charlotte, she was renowned as a witch. Minji was far from the mean girl type like Aileen in her past life. She was, in fact, always a pushover and could never say no, but she has no interest in dying painfully like Aileen and is determined not to live as a villainess. She has power, money, honor, and even looks. She has finally achieved her dream of living as a rich couch potato. But sadly, Aileen has everything but a perfect family. She has a father who neglects her, Duke Vincent Mertensia, and a brother who seems to despise her, Aslan Mertensia. And so the current Eileen spends her day binge-reading Linta's romantic novel. A while later, she looks outside the window to see Falengea, a solar eclipse. Leyte Empire, which is the setting of this novel, has a powerful emperor and is called the Land of the Brilliant Sun, where night never falls. However, the shadows cast by those brilliant rays hide a dark past. When Falingea occurred five centuries ago, Kyle, the most notorious warlock of all time, made an entire kingdom vanish overnight. Thus, people are afraid of Falingea as it covers the sun, which is the symbol of the emperor. But in reality, our female lead just made up a name that sounded cool for her novel. Aileen drowses off, excited for the next day as Linte's limited edition novel will be awaiting her tomorrow. Aileen's peaceful plans, however, get disrupted. The next morning, Aileen is shocked as the maid tells her how Linte's limited edition novel will arrive tomorrow. She realizes that she is stuck in a time loop where the day of Falingia is repeating itself. Meanwhile, a man feels a sense of deja vu, stronger than ever, which he finds quite unpleasant. Aileen tries to go to sleep to get rid of her current predicament. However, when she opened her eyes the next day, Linta's limited edition novel was not waiting for her. She was still stuck on the same day. She ponders over what's happening. She wonders if it's God's wish for her to stop living life as a hermit. A window appears stating that the novel is currently undergoing maintenance. She decides to wait for the manager to fix the issue and continue to enjoy living as a rich slacker. Several days passed by and Aileen was stuck on the same day. There was only one thing that made living inside this novel bearable, and that was Linte. 
she becomes determined to move on to the next day, no matter what. She has tried going out for the past ten days and has explored the streets, but nothing has worked. A sudden thought crossed her mind. She wonders if to move on to the next day, she has to confront the main characters. She frustratingly flings the book to the other side of the room, unintentionally hitting the maid. The book hits the maid's head, causing her forehead to bleed. The maid quivers in fear of her mistress and immediately begins begging for mercy. Aileen stares at her awkwardly, telling her to calm down. Meanwhile, a man subordinate praises him for having insight into the future. The man becomes pissed at his subordinate and has a strong urge to kill him. To calm him down, the subordinate begins preparing tea for him. It is only when the tea accidentally spills on, the man does he realizes why he's feeling irritated. It wasn't just a sense of deja vu. In fact, this has actually happened countless times. He chuckles. Controlling time is entirely under God's jurisdiction. The man remarks that it seems he has broken his silence and started making a move. Does he love that human so much that he'd break the laws of causality? This was quite amusing for him, and he decided to snap this person's neck, as that would be the only polite thing to do. Meanwhile, the maid was still weeping. She only stops when Eileen threatens to eat her up if she doesn't stop. Aileen then stares at the wound and is about to say that it might scar, but halts. She rather exclaims that the floor might scar. The next morning, Aileen drowsily wakes up to find the weather changed, unlike the loop she was stuck in. The maid announces that the book she ordered has arrived. It is only when she examines Linte's limited edition book in her hands does she realizes she is out of the time loop. Suddenly, Aileen's brother, Aslan, informs her that their father is looking for her. And so, in her father's office, Aileen is confronted over her changed behavior. Apparently, she faked an illness to decline all the social gathering invitations that she used to love and brought books when she couldn't even get through a single sentence before. He reveals his decision to hire someone to teach her, taking her aback. Just then, the door opens, and a figure pulls her shoulders back, remarking that her posture must be worked on first. Vincent introduces the man as Aileen's tutor and personal butler. The man introduces himself as Sebastian. Vincent confesses how he has high expectations for him as he's the second son of Viscount Agate, a house with a rich history and tradition. This makes her wonder, and she asks why he hasn't taken off his hood yet. Her father frowns, saying he's dressed impeccably as a butler. This makes Aileen more confused. Out of the blue, the man begins to laugh wickedly, asking if that is how he looks in the lady's eyes. And suddenly, an endless feeling of foreboding overcame Aileen. Truly, the way her father describes the man's appearance doesn't make any sense. But she goes with it, making the man grin. He walks closer to her, assuring her she has plenty of time to learn everything before the imperial ball in the Harvest Festival, even without having to repeat a day. Aileen finally understands that the man is aware of the time loop. The man asks her to close her eyes and chant some unpleasant incantations, making Aileen wonder whether he's a warlock. He then tries to strangle her, but suddenly, waves of energy spark through her. On the other hand, Victor finds a woman in trouble during one of his walks. He saves her by killing the man who is troubling her and questioning her. She, to his surprise, isn't scared of her, and rather hugs him. This makes him interested, as he has never seen a woman like her before. On the other hand, Aileen gasps for air and asks the man why he's trying to kill her. The man reveals how it's been a while since he tried so hard to find someone. He then confesses how he had to repeat a very unpleasant day over and over again because of her. He demands comfort from her and makes her look up. He mumbles that she looks like a human, yet magic doesn't work on her. Seeing her surprised, he questions her, saying she should know about it considering she's a noble. Aileen wonders how he is able to use both magic and witchcraft when they are polar opposites, 
It should be an impossible thing to do. The man comes closer to her and remarks how she is dripping with so much love and Les Reeves' energy that she positively reeks. Les Reeves is the name of the one and only god of the Leyte Empire. However, Les Reeves was only a symbolic figure in her novel. She asks the man if he means Les Reeves actually exists. The man chuckles at her odd question. He casts magic, asking if she should be questioning this when her whole body is proof of Les Reeves' existence. This makes her frown, but it might be true since the man's spells don't seem to work on her. Seem to work. Aileen may have been a heinous villain, but she was just a normal lady without any abilities or power. She certainly wasn't loved by Les Rev or was capable of causing time loops or deflecting magic. There's no reason why her body should have any traces of Les Rev. Hence, all this must have started when Yun Minji possessed Aileen's body making her wonder if God loved her then. And so, the time loop was all Les Reyes is doing, despite it being a risky business. The protagonist realizes that the only difference between those repeated days and the last day is that she acts like a villainess. After that, the loop stopped. According to this, one could say that Les Rave wants her to follow the storyline, live life as the villainess Aileen, and die. Teary-eyed, she asks if this is a curse. The man bursts into laughter, saying, Who knew a god would fall into one-sided love? He mumbles how he has changed his mind and asks if she has heard Lesrev's voice or received any direct revelations. She denies it, and the man explains that it's like Lesrev wants her to figure out what he wants all on her own, no different from a spoiled child. Aileen remarks that that's one irresponsible god to whom the man confesses he likes her and asks if she has any wishes she desires. He explains how she is loved by a god, and he despises following divine will. Not only that, to the man, it seems Les Reeve has fully incurred her wrath so they can become good partners. She protests that she isn't loved. The man says even if she isn't, Disrupting her God-given fate together is a good way to mess with divine will. And so he proposes a deal to betray God together, revealing how he can ruin Les Reve's image completely. Aileen knew Warlock to be a monster that fed on human happiness. A woman who must live as a villainess until she meets her death decides to make a deal with the demon. But what's surprising is that such a man never made an appearance in the novel. She asks him to reveal his real name and face now. He says this is his real face, shocking her while at the same time making her excited. He then reveals his name to be Asher. Aileen recognizes the name as that of an evil warlock from five centuries ago. She sympathizes with him, knowing that living with such a name must be tough, as it's the same as someone on Earth named Hitler. And so the deal was sealed. Asher begins to train Aileen in etiquette immediately. Seeing that the man knew what she liked and treasured, Aileen asks if he used his hypnosis abilities on the maids and her father. Asher explains that it's more like charm magic than hypnosis. While hypnosis only allows one to brainwash and control someone, his abilities allow him to bring out and satisfy a person's deeply hidden desires. This makes her realize that Vincent must have truly wished for his daughter to have a tutor and butler. Thanks to that, she is getting a crash course in etiquette. There was something Aileen overlooked when she made the deal with Asher. Accepting his proposal meant that they'd have to stick together as much as possible to share information efficiently, and she only realized this after he had appointed her tutor and butler. Asher finally inquires who she is. He comments on how she seems to have given up hopes of looking presentable, and her posture and habits seem no different than those of a commoner. It's as if she has lived in complete seclusion. She responds strangely to certain things, and her speech and behavior are odd, too. He remarks that no matter how ignorant she is, as long as she's a human born in this world, the normal response after hearing the war in Warlock would be to tremble and shout for God's mercy. Moreover, she didn't blink an eye when she heard his name. She interjects, saying the last bit isn't true. 
She says she knows who Asher the evil warlock was, but it seems they just happened to have the same name. Asher hums in agreement, but states that hating on God isn't still normal. Asher announces, time is up and reveals she can find her identity himself. Aileen gulps in fear, knowing he will definitely kill her the second he finds she is the author of this novel, as, in a sense, authors are gods who create worlds. And Asher seems to despise gods. Suddenly there's a knock on the door, but before Aileen can answer it, she stumbles. However, Asher steadies her before she can crash and says there seem to be a lot of things he needs to teach her. Aileen answers the door and finds a servant outside. Aileen recognizes her as a suck-up. The maid offers her several blatant compliments, but the current Aileen knows better and isn't one-minded like the previous one. She recognized the woman before her eyes as someone who would betray Aileen and play the biggest role in destroying House Mertensia. Her name is Sophia Beryl, and she's Aileen's lady-in-waiting. Due to her lack of response, Sophia pretends to be hurt and cries. Though Aileen wants to avoid her, she finds it hard to push her away. For some reason, she is reminded of her past life as a pushover. Sophia actively reveals how it's all Lady Charlotte's fault that she took away the crown prince from Aileen, whom she had feelings for. She goes on and on and shows Aileen the new dress she is thinking of for her. Aileen looks at the design and recognizes it to have been created by Charlotte, the main character of the novel. Charlotte was from a poor Viscount's family. She grew up in the countryside, helping with farm work. One day, she gathered her skirts up to prevent them from getting dirty and noticed how cute the skirts looked. Inspired by the shape, she sketched a new design for a dress on a piece of paper. Later on, Victor discovered her design and had the world's best designer, Polanx, bring the dress to life. Charlotte's dress soon became popular, and all the noble women wore the design to the Harvest Festival Ball. Aileen was one of them, and it was here that Aileen poured wine on Charlotte, who was later saved by Victor. Minji was obsessed with dresses at the time she was writing the novel, Lady Lily. That must be why this whole dress element was included in the storyline. Back then, she had no idea that wearing a dress would be this uncomfortable. Sophia continues indirectly calling out Aileen as a witch, saying she will be by her side even then. Asher finally steps up, asking Aileen why she has such a thing by her side. Using his charm magic, he asks Sophia what her name means. She replies that her father gave her the name in the hopes that she would be wise at all times. She then shouts out that if he wanted her to be wise, he should have just given her money. She confesses how her good-for-nothing father gave away all his fortune to beggars, saying it was his duty as a noble. Sophia began to reveal her innermost thoughts without any hesitation, and she looked relieved while doing it. Sophia then reveals how it's hard sucking up to a moody tramp like Aileen, and also how she has been smuggling away her belongings. Sophia continues revealing her wicked thoughts, to which Asher asks Aileen how she wants to deal with her. As Yoon Minji, she has no personal grudge against Sophia. Plus, the one Sophia deceived was Aileen from the novel. Though she may have become the villainous Aileen, she is still the coward Yoon Minji. She chose to be used rather than disliked, and she could never say no. Even now, all she can think about is running away from reality. Asher walks closer to her, telling her she has nothing to fear as she has nothing. No familial affection, love, friends, or anything. He then reveals that since she doesn't like Sophia, she has two options. One is that she should punish and tame her or make her disappear from this world for good. Aileen chooses option one and Asher makes her repeat after him that she will never raise a dog that bites its own master again. Though Aileen and Minji have led completely different lives, here's one thing they share in common. Neither of them has ever had decent people to rely on. Asher clicks his finger to remove Sophia from her trance, who immediately covers her mouth in shock at what she just revealed.
Sophia swiftly goes down on her knees to beg for mercy, but Aileen feigns coldness and threatens her. She then has her thrown into the dungeons for the time being. Aileen smirks as Sophia is being dragged away mercilessly. This is the first time Aileen feels this way. Asher and Aileen were finally alone again. Asher asks why she is scared of her own lady-in-waiting when she has the courage enough to curse God. Knowing she shouldn't keep avoiding it, she reveals how she's from a different world and woke up here one day in Aileen's body. Asher reveals he had his suspicions, as she doesn't have a single aristocratic bone in her body. Cleverly disguising the truth, Aileen tells Asher everything, from how the loop stopped once she acted like a villainess, to what would happen at the Harvest Ball, and how everyone would revere Charlotte while shunning Aileen. And for some reason, Asher seems pleased. He reveals how a loop will eventually start again. But he asks that if Les Rev wanted the body's fate to be that of Aileen's original destiny, why would he choose her soul? She is the exact opposite of a villainess, and is from another world. Aileen realizes Asher is too shrewd for his good. She knows she was probably brought here because she's the author of the novel. She says she doesn't know, to which Asher randomly asks what she desires. She pauses and then replies that she just wants the loop to stop. Asher realizes her powers don't work on her since she's from another world. He drops his cloak and says he is ready to listen to what she has to say. Aileen averts her eyes, saying they will talk after he puts his beauty away, knowing he has figured out her weakness. He agrees not to ask her for now and pretends to fall for her lies. He then suggests that if she really wants to escape the loop or her original destiny, she should become a real villainess, the one that steals the heroine's place, a true villainess. Aileen has never thought of such an idea. It is because every fairy tale she has read always shows the villainess being punished for their crimes in the end. But what if she becomes the protagonist and ultimately wins? Such advice was given by a true villain who confidently declares that he could take on God and promises to help her. Who could resist the temptation of a demon? Feeling she might have a chance, she asks him to teach her how to become a villainess. Asher grins and says it with pleasure. And so Asher and Aileen wait for the next day to arrive. Aileen is nervous, hoping another loop doesn't follow them. But Asher assures her there's probably a limit to how much time can be set back, and even God can't control it however they please. Aileen's theory is that a loop only occurs at points where Aileen appears in the novel. Now that she thinks about it, the day of Falangia, which was also the day she hurt her maid, was when Aileen first appeared in Lady Lily and began her reign of terror. This means if she hustles during the time Aileen doesn't appear in the novel, which is until the Harvest Festival Day, she'll be able to change her fate. After Aileen is dressed up, she goes outside to see that Asher isn't wearing his cloak like usual in front of the maids. She points it out, to which she reveals that those born with mana inevitably attract misfortune, and it can rub off on those around them like a curse. He explains how he wrapped his whole body with a cloak to suppress his mana, but there are plenty of other things that can replace it. He reveals his tattoo, and Aileen is shocked to see the snake tattoo move. Upon asking, Asher reveals it's a spell that completely drains his mana and vitality. Aileen asks if he will be okay, taking him aback. He asks what she said, saying his hearing has worsened with age. Aileen asks how old he is, and he reveals he must be over 500 years old. He then shows Aileen her timetable, explaining how her day will start at 5 in the morning. Instead of her lady-in-waiting, who's in the dungeon, her maids will help her bathe he and get dressed. He smiles, telling her to comply willingly before he decides to wait on her himself. She agrees, knowing she chose the path herself. As for Asher, he was excited. She is the only human that he cannot control with his abilities. It's as if she is like a blank sheet of paper. When all the conditions are met, he wonders what color will stain her. After that, Asher said, an evil reputation is still attention. Use that attention to steal Charlotte's spotlight at the ball. Aileen continues her etiquette lessons with Asher. 
He teaches her not to look down on others and not to mistake self-deprecation for modesty. To steal Charlotte's spotlight, Aileen decides not to wear the dress Charlotte designed. She reluctantly reveals she wants to wear a chemise dress, a dress usually worn as a nightgown. In the 18th century, the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette, designed a chemise dress. During a time when everyone was obsessed with plays, she wore the dress and appeared in a play herself. The dress became immensely popular, but Aileen isn't a king or queen. She happily explains to Asher how a chemise dress doesn't constrict the body like a corset or stomacher. It also doesn't require panniers that add natural volume to the skirt. Asher points out how she looks happy and how it suits her. He then asks if she likes dresses. Aileen reveals how she briefly dreamed of becoming a designer when she was young, but she forgot about her dreams a long time ago as she was trying to make a living. The reason she wrote a scene about Charlotte designing a new dress was because the Yoon Minji from ten years ago wanted to be like her. She was envious of Charlotte's life, a life of being loved without even trying. She then asks Asher if he had a dream too, to which he responds that he forgot something like that even existed. She confesses how wearing such a dress will make people criticize her. Asher tells her that whatever she wants to do, own, or whatever might benefit her and make her happy, no matter what anyone says, she must do whatever she wants. But if she's worried still, he suggests giving them a good reason to criticize her. He then asks what designer she wants him to bring, as he can bring anyone. Aileen ponders and finally makes up her mind, grinning. On the other hand, Victor is told the Imperial Palace's exclusive designer, Polink, went on vacation and cannot be found as he has vanished without a trace. Charlotte tells Victor it's all right, as she just wants to add a few more decorations. Today was the strangest day in Charlotte T's life. She can't believe something she wished for didn't come true. Everyone loves her, and someone always comes to her rescue when she's in danger. She thought all her good fortune was because she was blessed by God. She decides to go to Polence's home and search for clues, despite His Highness getting mad. However, she got caught in a flash by the knights. But she manages to make them give in with her charm. Reaching Polence's house, she finds a dark figure standing there. But suddenly, it appears behind her, making her fall. She is surprised to learn that no one is coming to save her this time. Instead, she couldn't move at all. She reveals her name upon inquiry, making Asher realize who she really is. He says that for someone so beloved by God, he can't feel any energy from her at all. He remarks that a weed no one hesitates to pluck is better than a frail plant. Angry? Charlotte asks how he is to speak to her that way. She then asks if he is saying she's worth less than a weed. Asher agrees, saying that at least the weed is cute. Later on, Aileen makes the exclusive designer, Polank, make a dress for her by threatening him, Gent Lee, in the way Asher does. Polank is shocked to learn of the unfamiliar yet beautiful idea of a dress by none other than the witch Aileen. As for keeping an eye on Chalotte, Aileen discusses her idea of recommending Sophia to the Imperial Palace and having her spy on the lady. Asher chuckles as he sees her execute this idea and remarks on how adorable she is. Though this flusters Aileen initially, she realizes he must have only said this since she listens to whatever he says like a pet. On the other hand, Charlotte gets prepared for the event too by her sly lady-in-waiting. She hopes to meet the man from that night at the ball, hoping to remind him of his place. She was sure he must be a noble, as he was wearing a family crest. Aileen has the maid she accidentally hurt with the book previously.